Well, I just took apart on one of these LED float lights. I remembered that I bought like a wireless camera, like one of these tiny ones that you, like one of these spy cams actually, you can hook up like a 9 volt uh, battery to it. And it comes with a receiver which has got four channels actually, got a channel selection. And also with two power supplies, one for the camera, I didn't expect that because it came with like 9 volt battery um clip that you could like hide that thing and one for the receiver uh the one for the 9 volt battery i think i already threw it away because uh, for the um camera i already threw it away i think both of them run at 9 volts one amp which is good i mean it's supposed to be one amp and i live in europe i bought it through aliexpress um they sent one of these north american plugs which is pff, i mean i don't care i wouldn't plug it in anyway i've got adapters but I still don't do it because it's just a death trap probably. It's also very light, two ounces probably. It's it's a, it's a joke. And uh, the other power supply, if you remember or if you watched the other video, it was it it was a death trap. Actually, it it was a uh, power supply to put out like 4.2 volts to charge a lithium battery, and there was no current limitation or anything. Um, they used Cena diodes for volt voltage stabilization in the 220 volt model, and they had no separation whatsoever. There was no separation in the power supply at all. And the 12 volt plug um, actually had a voltage divider to get the voltage down <laughs> to 4.2 volts and even quarter watt resistors. That, that's, I mean, you plug it in and instantly it sets itself on fire. I mean, if it was like a device with low quality parts in there, it probably lasts, I don't know, 100 or 200 hours. I kind of understand that if you go cheap in China, but if you build a device that instantly sets itself on fire, the minute you plug it in, the second you plug it in, it's just, I mean, who could sell that without having problems sleeping? I don't get it. And probably this power supply is going to be as worse, as bad as the other one. Well, just one screw. Okay, I see. The cables are a tiny bit bigger. And this time we got actually full bridge rectifier also we got a fuse that's a funny one i've never seen that before probably the cheapest one you can get um uh cheap chinese capacitor with 400 volt rating by a company called Huness. well um might be a cheap brand name supposedly 105 degrees rated a good switching MOSFET and now we're gonna turn around and see whether we've got separation and I uh, we've got separation uh, in a way not really but in a way but it's like too small way too small so well let's just find out how good the separation is how many millimeters do we have here well, that's probably at best, that's 3.8 millimeters. That corresponds to um, 0.1495 inches. And for uh, spikes of up to 4 kilovolt often and 20 kilovolts for certain periods a day, that's just not good enough. It's, I mean, well... If they didn't invest enough into making the separation good, the transformer might have a, like very bad um, um, separation as well, and insulation as well. So probably just get that thing thrown away. Could you salvage something? Yeah, you could probably build a high voltage transformer out of that thing. Um, you could salvage the transistor, which is kind of useful because it might be a high voltage transistor. I could tell you what it says on there. It says SXW13003. Uh, generic whatever fat. Um, no so wheel switching, I see. We got a feedback thing, feedback loop, probably for this transistor as well. Well, it's just cheap. Well, why do they even let the power supplies and... I mean, why do they even ship things with these power supplies? It's just, it's just garbage. I get them, and what I do is, well, already tore it apart. I probably still use that plug for something like 100 or 200 milliamps because I don't trust trust these wires. 
They might be steel. I don't know, but possibly no copper in there. And I take that thing and throw it away. So yeah, quite interesting to see what kind of crap they sell on some of the um, internet pages. So as I told you, never buy power supplies from China.